My name is uh, Annalie Fisher, and I'm a mission specialist astronaut. <laughs> what was I like growing up? I was a nerd. <laughs> I loved science and math. I loved to read. I was very shy, very quiet. My interest in space started when we were uh, listening to Al Shepard's suborbital flight. We were outside standing around our PE teacher with her little transistor radio. I went to UCLA. I started out as a math major. I switched to chemistry. I graduated with my BS in chemistry. I went to graduate school for a year and wound up getting my master's, although at the time I was on the PhD program. And then I went to medical school at UCLA and wound up going into emergency medicine. I found out about the NASA selecting mission specialists for the space shuttle program quite serendipitously. And I can still remember my, my husband paging me and, and saying, Anna, we have a month to apply. So it happened pretty quickly from the time you applied to when I uh, interviewed. It was only a couple of weeks. But then when the phone call came, it was so surreal because, you know, <laughs> you know you're thinking, wow, I'm getting this call and I'm actually being selected as an astronaut. I think my friends were surprised because I'd never really told anyone I wanted to be an astronaut. And so when they found out I applied and got accepted, you know, they, they remembered me as the shy nerd person. <laughs> so I think they were a little surprised, but everybody was happy. Everyone was so supportive. I, I knew that I belonged there, and I really feel strongly that certainly the six of us and many of the women really stood on the, the shoulders of the women that had gone before. I've described it before as I felt like I, I caught a wave, like a surfer, right at the right moment in history when the social attitudes were changing and just happened to come along at the right time to where the doors were opening for women. Well, once we were selected, the astronaut candidate year was just you know, learning what the shuttle was all about, learning about orbital mechanics, getting science briefings, but it was kind of fun to be at the beginning and to try to be developing all of these things. For example, one of the things I was assigned to early on was they wanted one of the smaller women to get in the spacesuits and, and start seeing if we could do EVA, spacewalks. I was just told to get in a suit and start working in the tank with my colleagues and we, we did a lot of the development runs for the mini workstation that we still fly today. The tethers, how they fastened and could you do that without being able to see them. We did all those early runs. Well, that was a very interesting time because um, I was assigned to my flight two weeks before um, I delivered my daughter, my oldest daughter. I remember um, I delivered Kristen on a Friday and I was at the Monday morning, eight o'clock meeting the following Monday. Now I didn't stay at work all day long, but, um, but I wanted to make a statement that, you know, yes, I had a child, but I'm committed to this and I'm gonna be here. So I was Capcomming at the same time. I had a new baby and training for my flight. So it was quite the challenging time, but I, I was absolutely blessed with the lady who took care of Kristen and it was teamwork. And without her, I never could have done what I, what I did because I knew that Kristen was 100% safe and was getting all the love and care and so it, it, it worked out, you know, walking out to, to launch and um, I remember I'm walking out and I'm looking to see Kristen and then once I saw Kristen that was it, you know, I was good to, good to go. <laughs> I was the flight engineer, so I trained with the commander and pilot. I had three things. I was watching airspeed, altitude, engines, airspeed, altitude, engines. I just wanted those eight and a half minutes to be over successfully. If I could have picked a flight to fly on, that would certainly have been one of the ones I would have picked. It was so exciting because we launched two satellites on day two and day three. We were in 
instrumental in helping design the concept for how we got those satellites because they were a Hughes 376 satellite has solar arrays all the way around it. it's a cylindrical satellite and so there's very few areas where you can actually touch it to hold it and figure out how you're going to hook it into the shuttle payload bay to bring it back so we got to be a part of the design of it we figured out the procedures together with our trainers and with our flight controllers so that was from February to November that's a pretty short time to come up with all this and design the hardware, build the hardware, the procedures, the training. And then I was the um, arm operator for retrieving the two satellites, and I was the lead for deploying one of the satellites. So it was a really busy flight, but just so much fun. I think the future for NASA is really exciting. You know, I thought that when I came at the beginning of the shuttle program, but now we have the commercial crew program and then the Orion spacecraft to go beyond low Earth orbit. And just figuring out how these different spacecrafts are going to work and the suits that you're gonna fly in and the procedures. Um, I just think it's just gonna be so exciting to have these multiple vehicles, multiple opportunities to go into space. And then slowly, as the general population gets a chance to go into space, then maybe they'll understand why it's just so amazing and, and be able to see our planet from the vantage point that we have been able to see and, and hopefully realize that this one little planet that we have in this vast blackness of space and that we really need to take care of it and of each other. So I, I think it's a real exciting time and I'm jealous. <laughs> have to hand it over to the, the new people that are waiting in line and I'll be cheering from the sidelines. Subscribe for more space. space, 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 space.